What is a cap? As many of you may know, a cap plays a big part in Southern Plains severe weather and really all across the United States, but primarily in the Central and Southern Plains, we see the biggest impact with a cap. Now, what is a cap? It's basically something that takes storms away from developing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this diagram that the National Weather Service has. You can see on the left side of your screen with a cap, that's basically what it's showing with clouds. Now, when there's a cap in place, which a cap is basically a temperature inversion in the upper atmosphere, right around two mile, one to two miles up in the atmosphere, which is about five to 10,000 feet. You can get the general picture that there's warm air at the surface. So let's say the surface temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say when you go up in the atmosphere, let's just say you're at 8,000 feet, it's 60 degrees. And then all of a sudden when you get to 10,000 feet, the temperature is all of a sudden 65 degrees Fahrenheit. What does that mean? Well, there's obviously that means there's a temperature inversion, which that temperature inversion will keep clouds from developing up anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 feet. That's where the clouds are being peaked at, which is 10,000 feet. Now, if the cap is overcome, let's say the surface temperature goes to 80 degrees. And let's say this temperature here is like 68 degrees. And let's say this temperature is still 65 degrees. Let's keep that constant. If we go over here to you know, the right side of the screen, you can see there's no cap. And that's basically what that means is that the cap was overcome by the surface temperature and the temperatures in between zero to 10,000 feet in the atmosphere. And then you can see that clouds will build up and eventually we can see supercell storms develop depending on if there's an initiator for those storms to develop, which means there have to be like a dry line, a cold front, an outflow boundary, that sort of thing would have to be issued or basically needed for a cap to be overcome. Let's go to another example. This is a sounding from the National Weather Service, which they launch a weather balloon every morning. This is at seven in the morning on April 12th of 2022. You can get the general idea here. Look on the left side of your screen. You can see the temperature and the dew point. The dew point's not important, but that's the, well, it is important, but it's not important for the cap at least. You can see that's the green line. The red line is gonna represent your temperature, which will be you know used for determining if there's a cap. Well, you can see at the surface at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 25 degrees Celsius or so. Once you go up in the atmosphere to around 15 degrees Celsius, which is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that that is where there's a temperature inversion beginning. That red line goes all of a sudden back in, basically, let's just say to the east. It's not east, but it's to the right, basically. This is representing your temperature inversion, because all of a sudden when you go from about, let's just say this is about 6,000 feet or so, you can see that's about... 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you go to right here, you can see if you draw the line down, that's about 22, 23 degrees Celsius, which is somewhere around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see here that the temperature inversion is issued here. That means that if clouds are trying to develop, let's just say at 4,000 feet, which usually they don't, but let's just say they're developing at 4,000 feet, they can only go up to about 6,000 feet here and then they'll be capped off unless the the cap is overcome by a warmer surface temperature and as well as temperatures warmer between 5,000 to zero feet. Some showers and storms can be elevated over the cap, which means that these clouds develop and start just over where that cap is. So they can start developing here, let's just say around 7,000 feet, and then they start growing from there. But typically these are the storms that are not severe. And most of the time there might be some hail, like small hail, but nothing much more beyond that in most cases with elevated storms. Let's take a look at the future radar in terms of a cap. Now this is the CIN, which is gonna represent the cap in the atmosphere on a future radar scale though so sometimes this is accurate most of the time it's pretty close to accurate but obviously it's not always accurate you can see all the reds purples yellows those are all representing a pretty strong cap any grays are usually a bit of a weaker cap and then there's almost no cap in any of that white white space so you can see all, all this basically out back off to the west is all white space now there won't be any storms that would develop there mainly because they're the dry line is set up here it's much drier air back off to the west but here's your dry line right around eight or nine o'clock in the morning eventually as you go throughout the afternoon Afternoon, this is pretty much close to lunchtime you can see that all of a sudden there's a cap area that starts to weaken and this is in western dfw and central texas that white space can represent where those storms can develop right along that dry line which is right here so you can really expect storms to probably develop right in this area here probably right around you know one two maybe three o'clock in the afternoon Eventually, as you go throughout the day, the cap starts to weaken in Oklahoma, but it's much stronger in Oklahoma, at least during the morning, and it starts to slowly weaken during the afternoon, which might lead to more of an isolated activity. Where that dry line is, you can see that there's not a whole lot of, you know, weakening of the cap, which is usually where those storms will develop is right along the dry line. So you can see that there's really right here, it's a pretty still a pretty strong cap, so we might not see any storms there. As you go throughout the afternoon, you can see the cap is much weaker here in North Texas, and eventually it starts to try to weaken in Oklahoma, but it's not weak completely. So what we can take from this is basically if I made a prediction, and obviously I've probably already seen the computer model, but if you make a prediction on where those storms will likely develop, here's your dry line again, or not right there. 
So here's your dry line right here. It goes all the way through Oklahoma and whatnot. You can see that this is where the storms will probably develop initially. And then eventually back off here to the north, there might be a few isolated storms in Oklahoma that might develop, but that would be probably about it. So let's get a general idea of what the future radar shows for us. It might be a few, but again, those little blue specks are gonna represent your elevated showers or maybe even a storm, but they are usually not severe. As you can throughout the afternoon, you can see those storms start to develop here across southwestern DFW and southwestern North Texas into central Texas. Not a whole lot in Oklahoma, but a storm or two might enter Oklahoma and then eventually these move out to the east but you can get the general idea again that's where they develop is where those circles that I just drew are because the cap is a lot weaker in those locations hope you learned something this from this video if you did make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel make sure to follow us on Facebook